welcome everyone to our very first roundtable. Welcome from Be to Change and thank you so much for joining us today. So the purpose of these roundtables are to generate discussion, to inspire and more importantly to create some action that comes out from these discussions today. So how it will work is that because we're running live, all we have to do to take part is listen to us and engage by um, typing your comments, your questions, thoughts, feedback in the um, comment section below, and we will address them and get to them as we go along. So what I'll do now is I'll introduce you to the team. So we've got um, myself, I'm Ashley, and I'm um, one of the co-founders of Beta Change, currently a, a dietitian and finishing my PhD in diabetes education. We've also got Katie, our fabulous producer, and I'll pass it on to Payen to introduce herself. Hello, I'm Payen from Singapore. I'm super passionate about diabetes. I've had it for over 25 years, uh, especially interested and focused in on uh, the intersection of healthcare and technology as it relates to improving the lives of people with diabetes. Uh, and I'll pass it over to Stephanie. Hey everybody, I'm Stephanie. Um, I'm in Western Australia at the moment. Um, and it's great to be here with you all on Facebook Live. Uh, now, I'm a geologist by trade, um, but I also believe I'm a professional at diabetes because <laughs> I've had it for almost 14 years. Um, so yeah, I'm really proud to be part of the Beta Change team. And yeah, really excited to hear uh, what you guys have, um, ideas, and uh, also the discussion from today. So yeah, I'll pass it over to you, Ash. Thanks, guys. So basically, uh, we are the co-founders of Beta Change. So this will be our very first sort of live event to you. Um, if you can't join us to the live, that's okay. A recording will be available on our social media platforms once it's all done and dusted and edited so we look extra pretty. Um, but we'll move ahead now. So our first question for today is what defines a diabetes community? So when we talk about a diabetes community, we think about, say, our diabetes family or um, even workplaces that we've worked for, like organisations or volunteered at. Um, so I'll pass it on to Pei Yen. Yeah, so... Um, what I think about when they say that what defines the diabetes community is that um, all of us here is a member of a diabetes community, a big diabetes community. But within this huge community, there are many other smaller communities. So what I think that defines us as individual, at these individual communities, are uh, it's like what kind of members you have, um, the values, the attitudes of this member within your community. And also we have to factor in the um, local culture and what we believe in our in a local context and yeah that's all basically all that i feel that shapes the diabetes community within your own um area yeah how about you rob yeah, and that was great and what i first do i first want to maybe define community for me and and i do that through looking at what was my first community and that was my family and it started really with the care it started with, you know, the fact that, you know, I trusted them and they were the ones to really support and educate me growing up and, and being someone that wasn't able to live, um, you know, on my own as a young, as a young human. And it's also great because it's evolved so much over time, not just um, my community with my family, because they took on that role of, of that diabetes community for me with my mother being my on the go endocrinologist, but now in is you know evolved to my friends and to my coworkers, and you know it evolved as well within my own healthcare community, uh, with my my endocrinologists, with my doctors and certified diabetes educators and coaches, and and it's been incredible to see that evolution. But it really, each of them have their own specific um, abilities to provide support, provide education, and even for a friend to provide that lateral nudge or that reminder to check my blood when we're out. Um, it makes a huge difference. And I also think about how the way communities interact changed over time. I mean, you look back, um, you know, a decade ago and we weren't able to do this. We weren't able to communicate so easily all around the world. And I think that's really enabled us to um, collect and hear and bring people together from around the world to 
create a global community for diabetes. And that's something that's been um, really incredible to be a part of um, just over the past few years and really excited to see what this new um, you know, digital world will bring and what that will empower communities to become. Uh, I'll pass it over to the other side of the world to uh, Stephanie. Yeah, thank you so much, Rob. Um, I have to agree with you. Uh, Technology has come such a long way, um, and I think it's played a pivotal role in my diabetes communities that I'm part of. Um, and I think for me, my diabetes community is all about friendship. Um, I have my medical team, like how you mentioned, Rob, um, that provide the medical support. But I think for me, my, my diabetes community, it's so important that I have that friendship. Um, and I think uh, it's it's become pivotal in my life to be able to to be able to communicate instantaneously with someone else who is living with type one diabetes, um, and ask for support, ask for advice, and also learn off them so that we everyone's learning off each other. I have my local diabetes community, um, and back in Tassie when I was living in Tassie, that was uh, amazing, amazing to be part of such a, a strong a small but a strong tight-knit community um, and then on a national level um, I've got my other other diabetes friends around Australia um, and also my international diabetes community um, you know friends from all over the globe uh, who share their experiences and um, also put things in perspective I think that's a really uh, key thing about being part of a diabetes community is to know what your priorities are and to uh, pass on your knowledge as well um, but yeah, that's what I believe is my diabetes community. Um, and yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts, Ash. I think um, it's it's great to hear what you guys thought made up your diabetes community and sort of how it evolves over time and how technology has sort of enabled that. But I also hear that friendships became um, a very central part of that as well because that's um, something that I can definitely relate to as well is that friendships you are formed through shared beliefs and shared values. And I think it's very much through that that, you know, we're all here today um, starting up Beta Change. Um, and over time, that community is um, has evolved in the sense of as, as I become more active as a diabetes advocate, um, my shared goals and beliefs also change over time. And it's now got to the point where, you know, a lot of my friends are all pursuing really big changes, um, wanting to pursue change the world, I guess, in diabetes community, which is fantastic. So we all work together to uh, create that, but also to support each other along the way as well. So that is, um, yeah, I guess to me, that would be what a diabetes community is, is some like a group of people with shared beliefs, thoughts, um, and who support each other along the way as well. Um, I can see we've got, oh, we've got a question. So I've got a question for Steph. Uh, what are the different similarities between your diabetes communities? Yeah, that's a great question, actually. Um, now, yeah, I mentioned that I have my local, my national, my international diabetes communities. Um, and I think, I think similarities are that there are all the issues and also the benefits of living with diabetes. Uh, they're all quite similar. Um, and I think, you know, no matter where you go across the world, uh, everyone will have their their support networks and their diabetes community. Um, and, you know, as we've mentioned, the friendship uh, and also the medical advice. Uh, I think the differences uh, across those uh, different levels are definitely the priorities. Um, so like the level of importance. Uh, so in Australia, um, we've got quite good access to insulin. Um, and our fight at the moment is to get better access to uh, new technologies such as the CGM. Um, but I know it's not the case in other countries. So I think, um, yeah, having that perspective of uh, what's happening across the globe is really important. Now, Rob, I know you have a lot to say about this topic as well. So yeah, I'll pass it over to you. Thanks, Stephanie. Yeah, no, great, great question from the audience and, um, and great thoughts there from you, Steph. So another thing it made me think about too is obviously, you know, within their communities, whether they are local, friends, regional, or even international and global, um, you know, the context of those may be different. But I think many similarities or many of the um, areas of interests or focus or goals 
or challenges that that community is trying to overcome or remove um, are the same. So um, it's a really interesting perspective to compare the two because, again, the similarities I think come with um, with with how or what they want to achieve. Um, and the difference is, I think it's just the context of you know how we're doing something in the United States versus how you're doing something um, for diabetes in, in Australia or Singapore with Payan or around the world. And yeah, I think we're all striving to do the same thing. It's just um, how we're doing that might be different from place to place, region to region. Um, and it also makes me think too, I mean, look back um, as you know, civilizations formed, we were stronger coming together. And that's why, you know, you know, right as the world was turning, we were able to come together and build cities and drive the world forward. And that wouldn't have been possible alone. So uh, just a couple of the thoughts there, but I will pass it back to Ashley uh, for further comment or uh, commentary from Payan or Steph. Thanks, Rob. Um, really good to hear your thoughts and perspective, guys. So if anyone who's watching, if you guys have anything else to add, feel free to add in comments um, like us or just drop a question whenever and we can always address it along the way. So we've talked about the benefits of diabetes communities and I guess the question now is um, we want to know what do you get out of your diabetes community or what have you gained over um, over time being engaged in your diabetes community. So we'll open it up to Payen. Yeah, thanks, Ash. So relinking back to the previous question about what we did, how we define a diabetes community, you know, as you can see that, you know, a diabetes within a diabetes community, there are many types of people. Um, you have people with diabetes, it includes the healthcare professionals and the head caregivers. So with all this, it brings in many different experiences, perspective, and knowledge that we have into the community. Think of it as like a library where we have different sections and different books on different topics and different um, subjects. You know, all these people within your communities, they bring in knowledge, support, experience, expertise. You know, it's a vast experience. And if you translate it across the globe, each region, as Steph has mentioned, different regions has got different experiences. That's a lot of knowledge. That's a lot of experience. That's a lot of expertise there. And so everyone, you know, we learn from each other. We, we understand how that different people manage their, uh, their diabetes differently. And we also learn that what works for them, what don't work for them, and what works for us may not be working for each of us. So that's a lot of knowledge, I would say. It's a library of knowledge. How about you, Rob? Thanks, Pan. Love the library um, comparison. That's really interesting. And I see it the same way, um, but maybe not as much of the library, but the way that that library is connected or how that information is connected. Because for me, the value is, is obviously having that commonality and connection with everyone. But it is really, like you said, with the experiences, with the knowledge um, and being able to not only listen and understand, um, that experience and knowledge or perspective from another person, but to share mine and to get feedback and, and their thoughts on that because, you know, how I, you know, manage my diabetes might be very different from how you do it. And it'd be great to get that perspective on, you know, you use shots for your insulin versus me using a pump. I'd be really curious on why you do that. And ultimately that will empower me and make me a better healthcare consumer and, and allow me to really become the best and most educated uh, that I can possibly be. I, I see that all kind of funneling down to what I call tribal knowledge. Uh, you know, you're able to learn from the group and you're able to collect, you know, all of this, you know, vast and different understandings and learnings. And that's really the, the unique part of communities is you have that commonality and similar experience and connection but there really is that ability to challenge others um with with you know the way that they're um you know different and, and differing how they live their lives and and manage their diabetes and maybe that's something you know that the international diabetes community differs from a local one is just those differences in perspectives and um you know ways of ways of managing so 
Um, that's my thoughts there, and I'm very curious on what your thoughts are on this topic, Stephanie. So back down to you. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, Rob. And um, yeah, I think my thoughts align uh, similar to yours and Payen's. Um, and what I've gained from being part of my diabetes community is uh, that network um, and, you know, passing around of, of knowledge of how to live better with diabetes. Um, and I think, you know, something that stands out to me is the friendships and the bonds that you create with other people, um, you know, all, all bonded by that mutual understanding of what living with diabetes is, is like, you know, the daily struggles, the daily triumphs. Um, you know, I think it's really important to remember that you wouldn't have, uh, you possibly wouldn't have interacted with these people, um, you know, without your diabetes. So I think that's something really special as well. Um, you know, thinking that, you know, everyone's living their own lives, their professional lives, student lives. And uh, we're also, you know, we've got this um, other identity as well as, you know, living with diabetes. And um, yeah, the the friendships, the friendships and bonds that you make with people is is what has benefited me. And I think what's benefited a lot of people um, I'll give you a personal example. Um, I've recently just moved across the country and my first friend uh, in, this, in this new city is uh, a type one. So I think that's pretty powerful and she's helped me out a lot um, just being, you know, a general friend but also giving me some contacts for, you know, creating my, my new diabetes healthcare team over here in this new city. So it's, it's very powerful, the connection and the network that, um, you know, eventually unfolds. So, yeah, very powerful stuff, I think. But yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one, Ash. Great, thanks. I think um, building up from what you've all said, it's about that strength in community. It's about strength um, in working with other people. And so it's definitely about coming together, isn't it? So I think for me, um, the benefit of a diabetes community is definitely confidence it's given me confidence to um pursue things that I never thought I could have ever done by myself things like you know writing to ministers about um diabetes rights and things like that so I think it's it's one of those things where you know change is is difficult to make by yourself but when united together with a united goal um it's possible it becomes much more doable and so it's um, working together, having those shared beliefs and shared values and, um, yeah, creating that change through getting everyone together and working together. So, um, yeah, and I guess I do also have a question that I guess came up um, as one of you were talking, so I'll pass it on to Payen to answer this um, in regards to what do you think, um, like would you um, prefer like, diabetes online communities versus in real life or you know what what are your thoughts on that PN? Good question. Thanks Ash. Um, so personally um, I've been involved with um, both online communities and also as well as physical groups so both has got its own advantage in the sense that you know online communities it can span a wide range of members not just within your local region, but it's, you can also involve um, people from other parts of the world. And this comes with the online collaboration and discussions, and you don't have to meet physically and to make friends. Uh, whereas for physical groups, physical communities, it kind of helps because it builds relationship between one another. So you have the social, re the, the social aspect of the community being covered uh, where you meet up with people, you get to understand, you learn about their lifestyles, the, the things they do in their lives, and you, maybe you can find common areas that you can do with each other. Yeah, so that's, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with both. Yeah. How about anybody else? Um, Rob, Steph? Thanks, Payan. I, I love that perspective. Um, for me, it's a balance. I think that there are you know, certain parts of a, you know, interpersonal kind of in real life, eye to eye uh, interaction and communicating that way. And, um, but I also think just, you know, over the course of time, I mean, look at how we communicated and connected, you know, even 20 years ago, you know, by letter and, um, you know, even further back than that, I mean, it was almost impossible to connect with people around the world. 
Um, and today we can do that, you know, through through Skype, Facebook Live, um, or even you know through apps and um, our cell phones. Um, but it really is that, as you mentioned, kind of they have their own advantages. And uh, I think for the online community and the virtual digital community, it's um, it's great because it's convenient. You know, I can talk with um, all of you. I can talk with a doctor through telemedicine or a coach or a certified diabetes educator. Um, right on my couch, I can receive world-class healthcare. Um, really, no matter where I am, by being able to text with a, a doctor, um, and it's been uh, it's been a really cool evolution to to witness not only as a person with diabetes, but as a you know as a young person uh, and young professional living in you know this this time of life. It's uh, it's been really it's been really incredible to see that digital evolution. Um, but overall, I agree it's a, it's a balance. Um, Steph, any thoughts on that? I think, you know, there's nothing better than, you know, catching up, um, you know, at the pub or over a coffee with with someone in your local community. I think it's so important to have, you know, uh, both aspects in your life. So um, I'd strongly advise everyone to get online or to get involved um, in their personal uh, local communities because um, you get different benefits out of, of each. So, um, yeah, if you're not online or if you're not involved in your local community, you know, just give them a call, get involved because, you know, uh, what's the worst that can happen really? <laughs> you can create some new friends and, you know, new advice, new support. Uh, it's invaluable. But, yeah, I'll pass it back to you, Ash. Thanks, guys. Uh, interesting, really interesting thoughts. And it is about balance at the end of the day, isn't it? It's you got to have a little bit of that online community so you can chat to people from across the world and gain their perspective. But also at the same time when you just need someone to hug because you know your diabetes is going through the roof or not doing as it's supposed to it's nice to have someone that's physically there too so really great um insights so i guess we'll move on to our next question we we've, we've talked about diabetes communities we've talked about um you know creating change but really in your experience what has been the barriers for you or the challenges that you faced um, in creating that change and what do you feel you need in order to make things happen, to create positive change within the diabetes community? So I'll pass it on to Payen. Hmm. Okay. Um, so the barriers or what do we, what do I need to create change within my community? First of all, I think that we need to understand the needs and the things that what the members want or what the community wants at your level and also because with that we can better align our the things that we do and what are the goals or the desired outcomes or the focus that we need for our own diabetes community and and in some ways it also helps to build in that way it also helps to build identity of your community so that you know you can find common grounds within other communities within this big um, diabetes the smaller communities within this big diabetes community yeah. Also, I think that as Rob and Steph and Ash has mentioned, you know, it's about connection, it's about communication, it's about networking. So within a community itself, I think it's very important that, you know, each every one of us communicate and connect with each other. So we need to talk to each other more. We need to find out, interact with each other more often to find out what we want and what other people need. Um, and also, if you bring it to a broader, uh, broader perspective, uh, within communities, we need connections to connect with each other across the globe. And because diabetes effort is not just a, a one-man work, it, we need collaboration. We need to work together to bring change and to bring, to bring things, get things going, and to do what we want to achieve. Yeah. So <clears throat> it's. It's so to, to, to sum it off for me, it's it's not a one man show to manage a diabetes community. Um, everybody in the community plays an important role in making in doing and creating a change. So what what do you need to change within our community, Rob? Awesome, Pan. Very, very cool perspective. Yeah, and let's be honest, change is really hard. I think that just through my experience and um, many of your experiences, it's not only difficult to make change, but to really understand the steps that are necessary to begin to 
remove those barriers or challenges, whatever they may be. And sometimes those barriers or challenges might not be the true barriers or challenges to making that change, just what they appear to be on the surface. Um, and I look at New Year's resolutions for me and for I, many of you, you know, we're at the, uh, the calendar new year here. And what we want to accomplish now is usually, you know, I want to be better at managing my diabetes. I want to be um, a better person and do this and that. But it's interesting because you go 11 months from now and are you doing those things? Are you able to change and maintain that change? Um, I think it's a very difficult thing to do and, and to just say you're going to do something and, and actually change that, whether it's through behavior or not. And it's interesting, I'm thinking now too, of whether you know it's I want to do this or I want to change that, if we can maybe shape that into we should change this and we should change that. And so instead of individualizing our goals and resolutions, we may be able to, you know, put them in a collective. And I think that will in itself make change easier. And so that's for me, I, you know, I'd rather make change together than just make change by myself. I, I think that that in itself will make um, things easier and possible. And especially as we try to amplify the voices that we have and our messages and our narratives and create that urgency that we need to make, um, you know, that's going to be done together. Um, I'll pass it over to Stephanie uh, for any further thoughts or comments there. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, Rob. Um, and I think, you know, you're on the money. Um, you know, one person, it's so difficult for one person to make any difference, I think. Um, so I'm right with you uh, when you say that we need to have one common message and one common goal um, as a diabetes community. And I think, you know, if if we're able to, you know, collaborate a little bit more, um, then our voice will be amplified and our voice will be stronger. And that's powerful and people will listen to that. Um, and I think also I might add like having the one common message and sharing that one common message um, it will reduce the confusion for the people who are trying to listen to you, um, like, say, policymakers or, you know, members of the community who do have that bit of power because, um, you know, they're busy, they don't know necessarily what diabetes is all about or what the needs are. What Payen said about identifying the needs, I think that's so important. Different um, different countries or different communities will, will need different priorities. Um, and so, yeah, having that common message um, and being strong and not diverting from that um, so that people do understand what you need and what they need to do to help you. Um, I think, you know, that can be really, really, really powerful. And, um, you know, if, if you are one person who wants something, you know, build a team around you that, um, that are passionate as well. Uh, and then I think you're pretty much unstoppable, really. But, yeah, I think, um, yeah, every, every place will have a different need. So, yeah, identifying and building a strong message around that is what we need, I think. And you know what? Hey, I'm actually going to jump in. You made me think of one thing there, Steph, um, and, and then I'll pass it back to Ash. But really, why, why do groups, you know, what is the, the foundation? Why are groups able to make change uh, more effectively than individuals? And a few things that jump to mind for me are accountability, as we mentioned earlier, the support that they can give the ability to educate them from what they've learned in their expertise and leveraging from, you know, what they have experienced. And um, I think that ultimately um, makes that, you know, overall vehicle to make change better and stronger. And let's be honest, sometimes we need to lean on each other too, um, you know, emotionally and psychologically. And, um, you know, I think that will uh, really make sure that, change is accomplished um, together. And I'll pass it back to Ashley. And thanks for letting me cut you off. No worries, Rob. Um, yeah, I think, you know, touching on those um, coming together and working together notion, it's, it's something that we recognize, how do we actually create the change? Like, what do we need to create the change? And I think for me, my personal thought is, um, that we work too much in silos. So we've got diabetes advocates doing their thing. We've got healthcare professionals doing their thing, policymakers doing their things. But really we need everyone to be coming together, everyone that's involved in diabetes, every stakeholder, 
working towards that unified goal, but then specialising in their own niche area. So diabetes advocates going out, sharing their stories, healthcare professionals talking about um, their specialty areas, policymakers creating change and, um, you know, other companies contributing where they can. I guess that's one of our things um, on our to-do list for this year is actually figure out how we can do that. So we're open to any comments or suggestions. Um, yeah, so we're going to read through and see if there are any other questions uh, before we sort of move on. I think we're pretty good to go. So I guess we've spoken a little bit about, um, you know, New Year's resolutions and, you know, being the start of 2017, it's, it's a clean slate. We'll start off with a clean slate. So let's talk about what sort of resolutions you want to see for the new year within your diabetes communities? What would you like to see changed either at a local level, a community level or an international level? So we'll start off with Payen. All right. Um, thanks, Ash. So I just have two things that I, I'm going to just start off with two things, two changes that I really want to see. First of all, it's um, more interactions between whether it's a physical or online and more initiatives been being done within at my at my diabetes community level um, so more interactions between members more initiatives being um, started off by members and not it's not just about what I'm doing and what I'm doing for the community and the second thing that I would like to see to have a change would like I would like to see for my diabetes community in 2017 is um, to engage more people to be to help and also to involve them, engage more people to be involved in creating a change for the greater community. So it's not just me doing fighting or and battling diabetes um, issues by myself, but I would like to involve more people and get more people in to this um, to to create change. So Rob, what change would you like to see in your diabetes community in twenty seventeen? Thanks, Pan. There are a few things, um, obviously many resolutions for me uh, for 2017. And I think, you know, as I mentioned on it earlier, I, I would love for everyone to come together, um, you know, through technology or through other means to communicate and connect, to come together and really get from the me and the I, but to that me to the we, and work on how we can ultimately move the the, the ball forward for the world and for people with diabetes. Um, because I think that if we can improve the we, then we can improve everyone that's part of that community. And, and that will therefore um, make everyone better. Um, and I, I mean, I think there are a few other parts that come with that, but for me, that really means improving the lives of people with diabetes. And we do that by simply coming together. And then two is being able to learn and educate others. And for me, that's one of the goals that I have for 2017. Again, is changing that me to we and, and really making sure that everybody is heard and understood and listened to. And um, we can take that and amplify the message that, you know, we need to do something for diabetes because it's not just becoming a, a major issue um, in our communities, but there is um, you know, it's becoming a major issue, especially with the rise of type 2 diabetes and, and access for medications and education and monitoring supplies for people with type 1 around the world. Um, but it's now becoming a financial crisis for, you know, many of the countries, if not all of them. And so I think we need to really drive that urgency forward. And we'll do that uh, together. Ashley or uh, excuse me, Stephanie, maybe we'll pass it off to you. Yeah, thank you for that, Rob. Um... I have to agree. I'm agreeing with everything. I think, um, you know, for me, my priority will be to uh, improve improve communication and collaboration with, you know, my diabetes community. And, you know, as I mentioned, like, I've got a new diabetes community now or, you know, an additional diabetes community in my new city that I'm living in now. And, you know, it would be great to uh, get them involved in, you know, beta change or, um, you know, just really get myself involved with what they're doing. And I think, you know, if people can, uh, you know, uh, join other people's causes, I think, you know, that's also very powerful. Um, and I think, you know, communication uh, in terms of 
educating people, uh, you know, the wider community um, to reduce stigma. I think, you know, that's the only way that we can, um, you know, get a better understanding overall of what diabetes looks like, which, you know, looks like. I don't even think that's a real word for this. But, um, you know, there are different types of diabetes. They're managed differently, you know, ra di ra di ra I think there's so much that people can learn. And I think, you know, having the one message and and collaborating with your healthcare professionals as well to make sure that you are passing on the right information to people, um, you know, to reduce confusion, reduce, you know, just uh, the stereotypes surrounding diabetes. Um, that's my goal. That's my vision for this year. And, um, you know, I hope that other people also have a similar uh, vision of passing on correct and, you know, up-to-date information about what diabetes is and what living with diabetes actually means. Um, and I also agree with, um, you know, Payan's comments as well. I think, you know, collaboration. Let's all all have the same, same one message. What are your thoughts on the topic, Ash? I think that was a really really strong um, comment in terms of what, what you want to see change in 2017 and that's a huge thing is the stigma um, that's coming through and how we can sort of em embrace the changes to stop that stigma because it really affects everything that we do from advocacy to um, creating change. So I think that's that's a really nice goal and really good and realistic goal to work towards, I guess. And also, I guess, in a way of, you know, addressing the comment there from Payan on how can we bring people to collaborate and work together. These days, there are so many things happening now that um, is fueled by misinformation or people, what people, people perceive that they think they know. And it's about starting that conversation and being open-minded to um, discussions and having people being open-minded also to receive that as well. So it really needs to work on both levels. It's a two-way street, um, which also ties in nicely to what I want to see in 2017 is actually to create this community. Um, you know, starting with Beta Change is creating this community that we can work towards making a difference in people with diabetes, um, you know, people living with diabetes, making their lives a little bit easier. So it's getting that conversation going, that common decency of having a bit more compassion for each other really needs to just um, keep working towards it. So really, it's like it's like what Eleanor always says, be nice to one another. Um, and I think Rob's got something else to add on to that as well, so I'll pass it on to him. Thanks, Ash. Yeah, no, it's um, it's really interesting because, um, you know, we're, we are in a time today where there is a need to do something and change needs to happen. And Again, I, I think we've all experienced the struggle of why is it so difficult? But you know, ultimately, I think that what we can do is not only come together, but really make sure that we coordinate our efforts. Um, and we do that through a community effort to start to prioritize and then take down these challenges or barriers. Um, and so I think that's a goal for, for all of us. I think we should all, as a global diabetes community and as a global citizens uh, of this community, we, we really should um, focus on being coordinated uh, in our efforts to make change because um, that, will, that will ultimately happen through um, all of us, but it might happen a little bit sooner than we uh, expect if we can do it together collectively and collaboratively and, and coordinated. So um, I'll pass it back to you, Ashley, just, uh, just a couple more thoughts there for you. Great, thanks, Rob. So. I guess it's it's really been such an amazing um, experience to bring this live to you guys. And I know some of you can't make it here today, which is fine because you can always watch the recording and please do leave us feedback. We've got an evaluation in the link as well. Um, but I guess it's now time for us to sort of leave our closing comments. And for me, I'll start it off this time is um, it's been so inspiring to hear, even though I think, you know, I've, I've spoken with this team so many times over the last in the last 12 months it still inspires me to this day to hear what they have to say and i really look forward to seeing your comments later on as well about what are your thoughts in here so it's you know thank you for making the world such a better place and for giving us the motivation and inspiration to keep powering on uh, i'll pass it back to payen well my journey with this team has been awesome it has been wonderful and a very enriching experience and i never thought that i could be doing this 
in my life. So it was a very, very good chance and opportunity. Thanks to everybody for collaborating. And yeah, here's more to be the change. Um, also, I have to th have to thank Katie Doyle for running this behind the scenes. She's done an incredible job to make this super easy, um, making sure the train runs on time. And um, I, I don't know about me, but making us um, sound and look great. So um, thank you, Katie, for all the work that you've done on this. And um, yeah, I, I just want to close by saying that change will happen. It's inevitable. We will make change. And we need all of you. And, and that's why, you know, I want to thank everybody for joining us today or for commenting or for feedback and interacting with us because we are going to make change and we want you to be a part of that. Um, because, you know, the more people that we have working on something and fighting for a goal, um, the sooner that goal will be here. And um, I'm really excited for what 2017 brings. And I look forward to hearing from many of you and hearing your feedback and your thoughts and your comments. And talking with everyone again next month. If you're not already involved in your diabetes community, then I strongly suggest that you hop online or you contact your local um, organization because, you know, you never know what opportunities might arise um, and also the friendships and the networks that you, you can really form. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's just my ending comments. It was great to chat with you all today and we'll see you at the next roundtable, uh, which Ash might tell you all about now. Thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, so thank you so much for joining us again today and watching um, our roundtable. Again, feel free to get in touch with us if you have anything to say, any comments, feedback, thoughts. Um, we do have the evaluation form in the link, but you can also reach out to us individually. We will be holding more roundtables and we anticipate that the next one might be in February. So please keep an eye out from us um, through our updates, um, either on Facebook, Twitter, by email, um, just let us know and we can definitely uh, let you know what's happening. So really from us to you, Happy New Year and let's keep the conversation going. Thanks, guys, and thank you so much, Katie, for organising and making us sound look good, but also to Be Live TV team as well for letting us use your platform and testing it out, really. So thank you. You guys are amazing. Have a fantastic day or night um, and we'll chat to you soon. Bye.